Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Comic Source Comic Boom collaboration. We're on day number 10. Day number 10 of the 12 days of Spawnness. It's almost hard to believe we're up to, to issue number 10. It's gone by really quick. It's been super enjoyable. I uh, apologize. I know my audio is not quite up to normal levels. I'm on the road, traveling, seeing some family for the holidays, going to Matrix Resurrection called tonight. So don't have my, my regular setup, but wanted to be sure to record this and get it out for you. You guys really seem to be enjoying these. The numbers are, are starting to go crazy. So we really appreciate the support. And uh, we're up to issue 10, as, as I said. And this was a real interesting issue. Uh, any initial thoughts, Rocky? Uh, well, you know, it's it stars Dave Sims, a uh, Cerebus character, and uh, it's it's... It was. It's definitely. It's. It's actually an issue that you could, having read issues eleven already, you could actually skip this issue. It's not a necessary issue to understand the narrative, but it. It definitely is. It's very meta in many many ways, and I'm. I'm actually not entirely sure what Todd McFarlane's trying to say. I, I have some idea. I think he's got something to say about creator works and what have you, and about uh, creators and their creations and superheroes and writers and artists and I, I so i think it's saying something outside the box a little bit but uh anyways it'll be interesting to get into it yeah well keep in mind it's written by dave sim so again you know just like the neil gaiman issue just like the alan moore issue you wonder how much mcfarland had input on the, the actual story but certainly with mcfarland being founding members of image comics and you know to hear him tell the story that the catalyst you know the first one to say hey maybe we should go do our own thing uh he certainly and especially at this time when this comic came out he certainly was a champion for creator rights and yeah it there's no once again even though it's written by dave sim and not mcfarland there's no subtlety here uh, we all know how political dave sim was and and is um and he's, unfortunately, some of his political opinions have kind of gone off the deep end in, in recent years, uh, especially with the misogyny and whatnot. But uh, he certainly was a champion for creative rights, you know, from the beginning as well. So let's dive into issue number 10. As I said, written by Dave Sim, art is by Todd McFarlane, letters are by Tom Orzakowski, colors by Steve Olaf and Ruben Rude. Now, if you remember at the end of last issue, he did Angela, but then he... Some would say stupidly. Uh, <laughs> Caligstro would certainly say stupidly. He picked up her staff and hit the button and transformed himself into energy. His, his energy counter went down to zero. And you kind of see it on the first page there, that little gloop floating across the screen. And we have somewhat of a dual narrative throughout this issue. <clears throat> the spawn on the left saying, I'm spawn. And the spawn on the right saying, I'm not spawn. And it's basically sort of a, a, a recap. And like Rocky said, none of it is is really that important in terms of the dialogue. There's not really much here. Some of it's meta, some of it's uh, expositional, recapping what's happened in the, the issue so far. The person who is not Spawn, but claims to know everything, has all, all knowledge of Spawn. What would you find if you dug up Al Simmons' grave? Who actually killed him? What are the names of the detectives that are, have been um, investigating Spawn? And so, at first, you're like, wait, so who's this other not Spawn guy that yet looks like Spawn and has all the knowledge of Spawn? And, and that character is the one that's narrating. And he goes on to say that he even knows what's on all the levels of the Tower of Hell that we saw a couple of issues ago that Alan Moore wrote, uh, except Erebus, level seven, Erebus. Uh, and I'm not sure if that's supposed to be Cerebus. Was the typo or supposed to be Erebus? Yeah. Not only I, that's a good question. I thought that I thought that too. Maybe it was a typo. Yeah, or maybe it's just uh, didn't want to go all that way at saying Cerebus. Maybe didn't want to give it away. I mean, I don't know. It's on the cover. Cerebus is on the cover. But the other thing that this guy has is the ability to teleport. And unlike Spawn, it doesn't use up any of his energy. In fact, nothing this guy does uses up any energy. It's it's all unlimited. So. You know, again, Spawn was killed last issue. Is he still dead? Who's this guy in the afterlife? Like, what's going on? And he, he does enter that level, level seven, because he wants to know what's on level seven. But what he finds is a bunch of guys wearing hoods uh, with nooses around their neck. They're being 
exposed to, to flame and fire, that fires a threat. And then as you turn the page, <clears throat> this is an iconic image, it's a double page spread, and you see the bars of this prison, and reaching through the bars of the prison are arms, arms of superheroes and supervillains, and they are very, very iconic. Like, you can recognize every single one of these arms. Every <laughs> single one is, is recognizable. You've got Juggernaut, Flash, Thing, Dr. Octopus, Thor, Joker, Dr. Doom, Beast, Venom, Spider-Man, Superman, <laughs> Hulk, yeah. Shazam, Batman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern. So maybe that last one, a Wolverine. I think I forgot to mention Wolverine. Um, and and I don't, maybe that one yellow one that's on the other side of uh, of Flash. Reverse Flash, maybe? Yeah. That one. That's a, that's a tough call. I'm not sure. That could be a whole slew of people. I'm not sure. Oh, and I think I forgot to mention Ultron next to Juggernaut there. So, again, every one of them recognizable. And the narration here, again, remember McFarlane leaves Marvel Comics, starts his own company. Marvel wouldn't give him what he felt he deserved, wouldn't give him what he wanted. Let's go do our own thing. Very much creator rights, which Dave Sim. Some people would say to the point of being curmudgeonly, always champion creator rights. He's saying these are heroes, they're noble, they're champions, they're watchmen, avengers, defenders, men of steel, women of tomorrow, gods of thunder, crusaders. Um, they are justice, they are nobility, and they are trapped, and they are screaming. And behind me, the hooded men tremble. You know, who who are these guys? So Spawn, even though not this is technically not Spawn, still has those instincts of wanting to rescue, wanting to be a hero uses his power, blasts out at the bars. Nope, can't rescue these, rescue these people. So in response, they say, take our power. And they, they implore him to the point of almost overwhelming him, calling out to Spawn, take our power, we're trapped. We're not allowed to escape. We're not allowed to live, take our power. And then, and this is what I was talking about when, when Rocky was saying that the digital issue was available. We turn the page, clearly this is Superman, right? But there's no there's no symbol. You can't see his face, everything's in shadow, but he's wearing a blue skin tight skin tight costume. He's got a yellow belt, he's got a red cape. He does have a grin that maybe you wouldn't associate it with, with Superman, but it says that the my planet exploded, I was sent to Earth as an infant. And when not Swan talks about him, he says, the lone voice is filled with hope and great caring, strong and noble, the voice of he who came first in terms of in publishing history, Superman is credited as the first superhero, you know, the one that started the, the genre. And so again, everybody's imploring him, all these heroes are imploring him, take our power, take our power, take our power. So he does, he does take the power. And he talks about how the sky's the limit. His arms and the earth, uh, his arms are the earth and the stars and the planets and the galaxies that never will be, right? Yeah. So again, this not spawn has in his hand, in his arms, the ability to create anything, right? To create galaxies, to create worlds, to create universes. So remember that because it's going to be important in a little bit. Um, and then we see this mashup of the violator show up uh kind of for whatever reason a woman so it's a mashup of like the violator and, and lady justice and on the scales that are being measured by this lady justice whose dress is made out of dollar bills we're told perhaps billions of dollars the dress would certainly be billions of dollars probably trillions of dollars once you get into the meaning behind this if you know what i'm saying with mcu and whatnot but in the scales are money on one side and heart on the other. Again, very, very metaphorical in terms of if you're a creator, you can go work for the big two and you can make your money or you can be true to yourself. You can be true to your heart, but you can't have both. That's what's sort of being said here. And again, uh, the, the blind lady justice here, blind violator lady justice is definitely definitely representing corporate comics, I'd say, and the billions of dollars made. Um, and so 
what Spawn finds out as Cerebus shows up, says, who are all these Cerebus? I'm, I'm here to take you home. He's like, wait, I, I can't go home. I, I got to rescue these people. Who are they? And Cerebus says, well, they're superheroes like you. And, it, well, and he's like, well, who are the guys with the hoods? Who are the guys that are blinded? Who are the guys that are being taken advantage of, uh, being tortured? He says, those are the creators who sold them. Like, okay, Dave Sim, hit us over the head with your uh, <laughs> commentary. <laughs> commentary about corporate comics and how these characters have been been bought by you know corporations and and used for years to tell stories. Uh, and, and notice he doesn't say they're stolen, but he's he's certainly you know in in the way these creators are depicted. With the blindfolds and the nooses around their neck, certainly they're they're captive. They're they're soldiers. They didn't have a choice. They got a raw deal. That's what Sim is saying, uh, and, and he, through the uh, mouth of his character Cerebus, who says it's best not to think about it. And Spawn's like, what, what? What? Wait, what's going on? So Cerebus takes him home, and when he takes him home, he doesn't take him back to New York. Doesn't take him back to the previous places Spawn has been. He takes him to the, what's not Spawn described as a beautiful house. And they go upstairs and Cerebus is telling him, the reason that you are here, the reason that you still matter is because your creator is still with you. Your creator didn't sell you. Your creator is married to a woman named Wanda. Your character has a daughter named Cyan. So what we come to learn is even though it looks like Spawn, this not Spawn is actually Todd McFarlane. It's actually whatever part of Todd, whatever creative spark of Todd as a comic book creator, as an illustrator, as the person that created Spawn, whatever spark of creation lives in Spawn, that's what we're seeing here. This piece of Todd that created Spawn. So that's why he knows the names of Sam and Twitch. That's why he knows what's in uh, Al Simmons' coffin. It's why he has unlimited power. He is the creator. He is that that part of Spawn which has been imbued from McFarlane. So you know, you think back to all that stuff that was being said about you know McFarlane chose to follow his heart and and leave Marvel and go to Image, even, even though you know he was given up financial security. He was given up you know all this stuff. Uh, and he gets to meet his daughter, and again, it, it, it's a little heavy-handed from Sim, but he does get to meet his daughter, and uh, and has a nice cry, and then he hears Wanda, his wife, come home, and he goes walking down the stairs with uh, with Cyan in his hands, and his wife says, "Oh, how was your day?" And he says, "Oh, I had a the craziest dream, but yeah, good day." So very meta, and. You can think of, there's a couple things that I want to mention. When, when we have all these corporate heroes that were trapped behind the bars, you can think of those bars as corporate comics, right? Like they're, you can't tell the stories that you want to tell because again, they're at this point, they're billion dollar properties. And so they're kind of locked away with their sort of corporate caretakers. So they don't have freedom because you can't really do what you want to do because they're too valuable. Uh, and so it, you know, it's a little bit, and again, I don't know how much McFarlane contributed to the story. Maybe it's Dave Sim saying to McFarlane, what you did by creating image is a good thing. And you have all these characters saying, take our power, take our power, take our power. They're not necessarily saying, take our superpowers. They're saying, take our agency. Again, this is the birth of image. At this point in the comic industry, nobody had any idea what was going to happen. Was image going to fall on its face? Was it going to work? Was, was that going to put the big two out of business, corporate comics going to go away. So that's kind of the wild west right now. And so them saying, take our power, take our power is more about giving power back to the creators. And that's what image did in, in a lot of ways. The other thing that I want to mention is when he does take the power, remember how I said that, or in the comic, Sim has not spawned say the power flows into me. It's in my arms in my arms is the earth and the stars and the planes and the universe or whatever, in, in my arms, in my hands. That's very metaphorical as well, right? Because what, in what way do comic creators 
create these galaxies, create these universes, create these stories and characters that we all love with their hands, right? Either drawing things or typing a script or, you know, working digitally these days or whatever. So very much a, a metaphor of, when you think about it, how incredibly powerful, how many worlds live within the hands of, of creators. So there's, a, like Rocky said, very meta. A lot of this stuff still applies today as creator rights haven't come as far as they maybe should have in the past 30 years since Image came on, on the scene. But certainly they've come a long way, a lot further than they, they were back then, especially with things like Kickstarter, crowdfunding, that sort of thing. So again, super heavy handed, super meta, but there's worthwhile stuff here. I know some people have a problem with Dave's name and his politics, but you know, it, there's nothing overt here that's offensive, I think. It's really just focused on creator rights and, and what McFarland was, uh, was able to do. So yeah, I mean, it's a good issue. And again, unlike, so I talked about an issue eight where Alan Moore got to write it and I felt like the McFarland art improved maybe because he didn't have to do any writing, but I felt like in issue nine, the one we covered last time, I didn't really feel like the art was that great. It had really thick lines from McFarland. Usually he uses thin lines. We're back to some great McFarland art here. And especially that iconic image that Rocky has on the screen right now with all the arms and the image that we showed earlier where not spawn absorbs all the energy. Uh, and that, that's just a fantastic image. I love that image with the, the planets and the stars and whatnot within the arms of not spawn. So yeah, there's a lot to unpack here. Um, but again, this issue advances the story of spawn together or, or forward. Not at all, <laughs> not at all. It could easily easily be skipped for sure. Uh, what are your thoughts, Rocky? Well, it's it's interesting that even even though it doesn't really advance the story, it 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 kind of references the story because it does talk about this is actually the se seventh level of hell, and this is because the the not spawn talks about how he's he's familiar, or I guess you could say the writer is familiar with with the character of Spawn because the creator creates Spawn or creates the characters. But they're they're familiar with all levels of the character except for level seven, the level seven, the Erebus. So, there. So they're, it's kind of a reference because we were introduced to the ten different spheres of hell in earlier Spawn issues, and this appears to be another level of hell. So, again, speaking meta and maybe outside the box a bit, it is interesting that you know what is level seven like this level seven. It, it almost it's. It's almost like a statement. I mean, clearly, like you said, Dave Sim is making a statement here. It's like, be careful, whatever your passions are, you know, to own what you create and don't don't lose yourself. Don't if that which you put your passion into, don't give it away. Cherish it. Uh, sacrifice for it. Keep it. Don't give it away. Uh, just like like the big two of it, just like that image with all the superheroes you know, reaching out through the, through the prison, you know, desperately trying, wanting to give Spawn their, their power so that he can continue to be independent and stay away from the big two and not become corporate, stay independent. I also find it interesting that Cerebus, I, I think prior to Spawn, wasn't Cerebus the longest running independent title? I think Cerebus went for almost 200, 300 issues, didn't it? I mean, sorry, I'm not I'm not picking up your uh, a sound, but uh, so, sorry. Therapist went for exactly 300 issues. Yeah. So when Spawn that broke broke the record. Yeah. So I find that interesting, and of course, Dave Sim would would not know that at the time that you know here we are, we're way past uh, three, well, we're past 300 issues of Spawn, and so here we are reviewing this uh, this particular issue. So. No, this this was uh, again very very meta. I agree with you. The art is a little better than in previous issues. I'm not really sure why, but uh, yeah, I like uh, I enjoyed it. I, I love the metaphor. I I really love the image uh, where it shows sort of uh, the the scales of the scales of justice uh, with Lady Death with having money on one side and the heart and the passion of the creators on the other. I thought it, I thought it uh, the, the metaphor works very well. What was that violator figure? They didn't make that in McFarland toys, huh? No, <laughs> I don't think they did. No, I'd, I'd have bought that if they did. I kind of like the perverse sense of justice. I got I got more than a few Lady Justice statues in the office. <laughs>
Yeah, well, that makes sense. You being a lawyer and all, I could see you going for that. So, yeah. Uh, again, like, I, I really hope, and, and you know, I, I've talked to Todd's representatives. At, I've talked to Todd at times at shows, and we've talked about having him on. We've never been able to happen. Um, I know he gets tons of requests, but uh, I, I, when I think about the things I would like to talk to him about, like these early issues, specifically the ones written by Alan Moore, I don't know how much you'd want to talk about the Neil Gaiman one based on you know the legal stuff, but this one by Dave Sim, the next one by Frank Miller. Like I really want to know how much input did he have on the stories? Like how much, or how much did he just say, okay, go nuts? Because uh, it's so interesting. It's not like he was it's like Spawn was the super well-established character to have these people come on after he only did seven issues, you know. But again, I think the seven issues took about a year to come out because they had so much going. Uh, and the books were just chronically late, as, uh, as Rocky will recall. But uh, anyway, any last thoughts on uh, on issue ten? Uh, no, I. Uh, <laughs> other than the fact that it was a you know again a really nice callback, three issues in a row from uh, very different styled creators. It was definitely McFarlane really was trying to make a statement early on with Spawn, and and he clearly succeeded because these stories again they've they've stood the test of time. Yeah, they, they really do. I wonder, you know, we've speculated maybe it's um, maybe it's the, the, the all the different characters with their arms sticking out. Maybe it's the Superman image. Maybe it's Dave Sim himself. You know, the fact that it's Cerebus. Maybe he's not allowing it. Maybe he's mad that Todd McFarlane beat his three hundred. Got to three. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, we want to thank you guys all for joining us. We really appreciate it. As always, appreciate the support. Uh, a real special treat for you. There's another twelve days of the comic source episode out today this is 12 days of fondness which is you know taking over the 12 days of the comic source but we're still putting out a few other episodes so i got a chance uh today to also uh speak with alex sinclair who i think is one of the most talented color artists of the last couple decades uh, a lot of people know his work from batman hush superman man of tomorrow i mean he he was you know it, it was that dream team of jim lee Scott Williams and Alex Sinclair that did just a ton of iconic DC work. So not only did I get a chance to, to sit down and chat with Alex and have a, a really interesting conversation about color artists and what they bring to the industry, and on a scan of an old, very classic, uncanny X-Men cover by Jim, the cover where Wolverine and Gambit uh, are, are uh, kind of facing off against each other. Now, you got to remember that when this was originally colored, their digital coloring didn't exist. So it was colored in the old style. So Alex takes a, a I mean, he doesn't do the whole thing because it would just take too long, but he, he, he fully renders Wolverine. He flats the whole thing and then he fully went, renders Wolverine while we're chatting. So that is out today also on the YouTube channel. There's also an audio only version that you can listen to, but I highly recommend you go and check out the, the YouTube version. Uh, even if you just skip to the end, because you've already listened to the audio, skip to the end just so you can see uh, just how awesome this this cover is by Alex Sinclair. So uh, we've I, I've known Alex for a while, and we've talked about having him on the show for literally for years, and our schedules just never lined up. And then we were just about to make it happen, and then COVID hit and that insanity. So I'm glad that we were finally able to do it, uh, and hopefully we'll have him back on again soon. It was a, it was a real treat. Some of the most fun I've had doing an interview in a long time. Very, very informative, as Rocky will attest to. Color artists, they just don't get the credit they deserve in comics. Um, it, it's better now than it used to be, uh, but they deserve so much credit for, for what they bring. So highly encourage you guys to check out that other episode that's out today. Uh, also, don't forget, if you are just listening to us uh, on, the, on the podcast audio only, be sure you head over to YouTube and subscribe to Rocky's channel, Comic Boom. That's Comic Space Boom! Exclamation point. That's where you can find all his videos, all his reviews, interviews he does, showing off his uh, great uh, collection of comics. Uh, ring the notification bell, as well as being like this video. All that stuff really helps us with uh, exposure and the ability to bring you more content. Uh, if you are checking us out on the YouTube channel and you're not subscribed to the, uh, the audio podcast feed, that really helps us out as well. Uh, so whatever your favorite podcast app or podcasting platform is, just do a search for the comic source and hit subscribe, we really appreciate it. Uh, and as we're heading into Christmas, just a few days away, I wanna wish everybody happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, 
or your Kwanzaa, whatever it is that you celebrate. We hope it's a, a joyous time. And you guys all get a chance to uh, at least relax for at least a day and read some comics. So uh, anything else to add as we're wrapping up here, Rocky? No, just happy spawnless. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's going to do it. We appreciate the support as always. We'll talk to you next time. See you later.